Did Pete Wilson retire? I haven't seen him in a long time. He does a lot for his. Well, the scouts are here for a quiet yeah. ceremony, so they usually go in there. I almost don't want to speak in the microphone too loud because the the ambiance in here is nice and quiet today. So nice. All right, so go ahead and call the meeting to order, and would like to invite um, Scout Pack three three one to come down and lead us in the pledge. Thank you for coming. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. Oh, thank you for coming. And we'll get to you guys in just one second, okay? All right, can we uh, call the roll, please? Trustee Sperling? Here. Trustee Lee? Here. Trustee Heinz? Yay. Trustee Youngerman? Here. Trustee Marisek. Here. And Trustee Bond. Here. All right. We're all here this evening. Thank you for coming. I uh, would like to move on quickly to public participation. We do have uh, Cub Scout Pack 331 with us this evening, uh, leading us through the with the pledge, but also uh, recognizing them uh, for the project that they worked on. Did you want to come and uh, kind of give a synopsis of what you guys were working on? You can go up to the microphone up there if somebody wants to speak. It's hard to see. Thank you. Part of our, uh, part of our um, service project for our Cub Scouts advancement rank was to clean up the lake around the Stimson Road area. The boys took about two hours, walked all the way around the, the, uh, the lake, we picked up a lot of trash, about 10 bags worth. They uh, were out on a kind of cold day, so it was a lot of hot chocolate after that was done. 
they worked very hard and they picked up a lot of stuff and they learned a lot about how much trash actually ends up in those tall weeds. So they did a great job. Awesome, thank you. So before you guys go anywhere, I have certificates that I'll, uh, I'll read out and then we can take a, a photo, okay? So I have Connor Hornbeck, uh, and this says, uh, certificate, certificate of Appreciation uh, from the Village of Montgomery, presented to Connor Hornbeck for picking up trash and beautifying our community. There you go, sir. Yeah. I can come up there. And then I also, I also have one for Leo. Leo, how do you say your last name? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to try that. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. I'll come shake your guys' hand. And then I have uh, Gabrielle Miller. Gabe, how you doing, sir? Thanks. Did I read this one already? I have Eric Bragg. How you doing, sir? Uh, and then Josh Hornbeck. All right. You're welcome to pay all the but you don't have to, you won't be offended. All right. That was A and B, and hopefully not the most fun we'll have this evening. So thank you for coming. All right, move on to item C, which is the Huntington Chase public hearing. Uh, this was continued from November 27th. Is there anybody, I guess I'll open the public hearing. Is there any member of the public that wishes to address the board on that topic? All right, with that, I will close the public hearing and we'll, that will be addressed um, later on. I'll move right into uh, item D, which is amendment to annexation agreement for Montgomery Place Apartments public hearing. And this, again, was continued from November 27th. Uh, we will be continuing this public hearing, but at this point, I will open the public hearing if there's anybody here that wanted to address the board on that. All right, with that, I'll continue that public hearing to the January 8th meeting, and we'll, uh, we'll address it at that time. And your last chance to speak uh, this evening would be under public comments. Item E, it's a two-minute opportunity for any member of the public who wishes to address the board. Anybody here this evening? That's not on the agenda next. All right, with that, we'll move on, and then I'll invite up uh, John Thompson of Retail Focus uh, regarding a development proposal. Good evening. Can you hear me? Hi, my name is John Thompson. <clears throat> Trying to adjust to the light here. My, name of my firm is Retail Focus, and I'm a commercial real estate developer. Thanks for taking the time to be with us tonight. Um, I'm here tonight to propose a single story self storage development on a vacant 3.4 acre site, which I'm under contract with MB Bank. This is on Orchard Road, uh, adjacent to, directly adjacent to the uh, ComEd transfer plant and also to the uh, animal hospital. Does everyone have a plan in front of them? Yes, okay, now I have additional plans. Um, we have met, my team and I, we've met with uh, Rich Young and Jared Chipman several times uh, for advice on how to move forward with this project. 
we believe the highest and best use of, of this particular property is what we're proposing is for this development. Uh, for a var variety of reasons, uh, this is not an ideal site for single family, residential, multifamily, uh, office, or retail. I'll be happy to answer those questions. <coughs> I am a part. I am a partner, but not in this development, with uh, the 53-acre Walmart at Orchard and Route 30, and have been in the community developing for the last 10 years. This is a different project with different partners on it. Um, our engineering team at Wolpert Engineering has designed a plan uh, that reviews, <coughs> reviewing it with KDOT's requirements for the new proposed interior road uh, adjacent to Orchard. Um, I'm here with Tim Reaper, my engineer from Wolpert. Uh, who has a good working relationship with uh, Pete Wallers from EEI. And uh, they have met uh, before and discussed the plan. And um, we can answer any questions also according to that. Uh, in order to be brief, in order for us to proceed to KDOT to uh, get approvals and moving forward, uh, we seek full support uh, tonight, even though on a, a non-voting basis from the board. And, and if, and if uh, successful at a later date, we would come in and we'd commit uh, time and expense on our end for presenting elevations, uh, landscape plan, material boards, and notice to adjacent owners. Um, the reason for us not doing a full presentation tonight, we want to get a view from the board to see if one is, this is, a, is a, a, a development that the community can get around and support. Um, and, and if so, that's great. If not, please tell us why, and we'd like to address those concerns. Uh, thank you for consideration. Thank you, John. Any questions, comments, thoughts from the board? I have a question, if I may. Sir, during your presentation, you had mentioned that you didn't feel that this was a suitable location for retail development. Can you explain why? Sure. Uh, I'm going to put myself on a limb and say I'm an expert in retail uh, because I've been in Montgomery for the last 10 years, and we developed the, probably the second largest project in Montgomery. And for retail to work anywhere, I don't care if it's Montgomery or it's in New York, and the retail basis is location, location, location. And this is not the right location. And the reason is, uh, it's, it's not a signalized corner. It's not at a hard corner. It has right in, right out, access only. The site's narrow and deep. Uh, we've owned land in this market for a long time and still have outlots that have been ready to be developed. If you go down the street at the Jewel Osco, it's been out there forever. So the question is, why would an interior site next to a combat plant sandwiched between an animal hospital make any sense at all? Um, this, is, this is our bread and butter. We know the retailers that are out there doing business. And, you know, the retail world's changed quite a bit, too. You know, you, you, know, you hear the, the Amazons, people doing a lot more merchandising over the phone, and it has changed over the last not only 10 years, but more so in the last two years. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you. I have two questions for you. Please. How many units are you proposing, or is it still too early? It's a skeptical plan. There's about 52,000 square feet of retail. We're looking at single story. Approximately, the, the norm is about eight, eight, uh, eight feet height, so probably near about 400 units, give or take. I mean, they'll change. Uh, it'll be, some of them may be climate controlled, some of them may not. But the design's called like a fortress, fortress pier, uh, uh, it's not where you'd see this in the older fashion, which you might see even in town, where it's a big yard with a lot of junky boats and trailers. This is more self-contained, security, uh, very clean use. My other question for you, especially based with your experience. Can you speak a little bit about how this, how the market can support this? Because I know we do have, uh, it seems like we have quite a few st uh, self-storage facilities within the area, not just within Montgomery. So if you could speak to that a little bit about why you think the market can support another. Sure, that's an excellent question. Uh, um, and I, I can't say with 100% surety, but we're, we're, we feel confident enough that we've taken this forward. Um, what's, what you see more now is the uh, multi-story urban type location where they're taking existing buildings and doing two, three, four-story climate control. The, the demographics for Montgomery just doesn't work for that because just don't, there's not enough residential account. If you're, you're downtown Chicago, you're in a more dense suburb, those make sense. The single story we think will be a little bit, probably a little more acceptable. The rates will be a little bit better uh, on, the, on the more attractive side for the local community. We think we'll tap in along the Orchard Road corridor is great traffic. The difficulty in this traffic, the difficulty that threw us a curve on this was we weren't anticipating the K dot. Uh, I don't know if there's a name for it, the interior road, and that threw us all for a loop. We thought we could work through with the right in, right out, and make sense. 
And I guess we can, but from what we found out through Rich Young and through Jared and also through KDOT and our engineers is that it's a temporary fix that only KDOT will only give temporary access to. Uh, there's the proposed 17 acre development, retail development to the north. The reason why that works for retail, it's at a corner. It's a large station from my understanding, it's a fuel format. Completely different animal than a Walmart or a, or a Target or with a number of strip centers. So that, that alone is just is one good focus on it. But with it, it, it does change it because what it does, if you look at the plan, <clears throat> we have ac an access point that we wanted to use that is current and not, not changing. But we also put on the plan, I'll let Tim address this a little bit more, on the north end, uh, a 20-foot snow gate. So that'll tie into the existing road. I've had conversations with the Animal Hospital, uh, really nice people there. And, and they have an easement that will go through their property. And it goes to the next property. But this has been on the books, I think, since 2001, 2003. So will it ever happen? I don't know. I mean, no one knows. So it's something you had to plan for. And I think if the 17-acre development wasn't moving forward, and from what I understand, please correct me, they acquired the land, but they're not developing it yet because they have some issues. I think they're still working out with, with KDOT. Um, so will it happen? I don't know. I mean, but I can tell you my experience is at the corner of 30 and Orchard, and sometimes these happen quickly, and sometimes they may never happen. But what it does is it affects this development, which is why it's important for us to have a better understanding night that we know that you're accepting of this uh, for a couple different reasons. Because if we go with a plan right now and, and KDOT approves it, that's fantastic. And you guys approve it, that's great. We can move forward and we'll spend time and money, uh, considerable money getting this engineered and, and, uh, and moving forward. But <clears throat> if, I, if I may be forward with the group, our reservation tonight of coming here, and I spoke to Rich about this earlier, uh, and Jared, and, and not doing a full presentation for you and giving you what you wanted, which is landscape, which is elevations, which is material board, which is you know, access, you know, contacting the local owners, is because we don't know if you're going to be accepting of this. We've heard in the past, and I know the past because I was there, the last, and on this particular site, but the last administration didn't like this use. And it's a completely new board. Love Mayor Browley. Uh, love the new board. And um, you know, it's a, it's, a different, it's a different feel. It's a lot more pro-growth um, and a lot more realistic. And then we also heard that maybe there's, there's people in the community or people on the board even that think this should be a retail site. And I'd be happy to stay here all day long and tell you why it's not working because I've got a vested interest right down the street. And if, if I can't move the land, it's going to be much harder to move this piece here. So, and we're finally starting to see some successes there, but it's been 10 years. Um, and you look at the Joe Osco down the street, uh, the, the bank that we're acquiring this from, MB Bank, owns that land. They haven't done anything. And they said, John, we can't give this stuff away. So in that setup, that's where the Jewel Osco anchor, which is still the dominant anchor in Chicago, without lots, with great access, at a light, in a great town, and they can't move it. So it, when, you, when you look at a site sandwiched between a ComEd and an animal hospital, it's like, okay, maybe if every other site, every site was taken up on Orchard Road and 30, I'd say, you know what, I'll be here to do re retail development. But for today, if you want to see development and sometime in the near future, I think this is the best use. And as I mentioned, I wouldn't want to see a single family home residential on this project or multifamily. I mean, who'd want to live there? Uh, and an office building, there's no offices really to, to, to name, and there's so much opportunity for other land to, uh, to develop. So I hope that answers your question. I have a question. <clears throat> you, did, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, sorry, it's a little long-winded, but I want to be thorough. Sorry. You've mentioned residential several times. Am I mistaken? This is zoned M1, M2? Yes, it is. So it's not, it's never been considered for residential from right. the villages. Unless someone came and asked for special use and variance. So my question is, this write-in access, write-out access point, is that the one that's currently there? That's correct. So if you take that for this, how do we get the agricultural <clears throat> in? We've, we just recently had this happen on another parcel where there's people that farm that land that's out there. Uh, that's the first I've heard of it. Where were they farm it to? It dead ends into the Comet plant, the animal hospital, or the detention, or the... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at or the, is there another one for their... this site that they it's must just this site. Uh, oh, was the... Trustee Marisek that is being farmed as ag. So okay, it's just this. There's other the access way. to other ag parcels in the region. Yeah, so south of the... Uh, must be the park desk, the ComEd, and then the Park District property, there's another farm There's another access, access point. The, for the okay. Hammond property. I, I, that's what I wanted to make sure. That was a new one for me, so thanks. Yeah. Good question, though. 
Yeah, because we just recently had one where we took away the access point <laughs> because we didn't think ahead. So um, thank you. What are your plans briefly for perimeter security? Well, uh, again, this is a preliminary plan. It'll be a, a, a CMU masonry type building. It'll be secure. It'll be lighted. Uh, you know, everything now is everything is. You know, you, you, everyone seems to have a nest in their house and you know on their on their on their offices and on their apartments. Or, so we would have uh, it'd be it'd be manned. It could possibly be manned, and then we'd have uh, security cameras on the perimeter of the property. I've also addressed that same concern with a doctor from the animal hospital. She said, "Her," I said, "What are your concerns?" And I said, you, you know, and that's that she's supporting or not supporting the project. She said security. I said, okay, as long as I know what your concerns are, we'll address them. So would it be a controlled access gate as well, entry yes, gate? Yes, it'd have to be. Okay. This is no outdoor storage? <clears throat> Looks like everything is under cover. At this cover. point, no. No, this is the plan we're going with. Okay. You know, there's, there's another, there's, you mentioned a competition. There's a, comp, there's a competitor in the marketplace. It's very hard to get to. It's a great visibility, which makes it more challenging than they have. You know, boats and RVs and whatever else you want to put out there. This is a nice, clean use. Yeah, and that would be my biggest concern. I think I mentioned this to you when, when um, via email or when we spoke. Uh, is just that I see this as a low-impact manufacturing use, you know, in the area. Uh, my brother ha seems to move every few years, so he's stored stuff in facilities like this. And you get a few people, you know, visiting a day or whatnot, and, you know, decent, um, in my mind, like lower daily traffic counts than what you might get with if it was um, uh, some sort of manufacturing use or even distribution. But my, my main and only concern would just be to make sure that it's adequately landscaped from the area, and I, I would be willing to bet that most people in the area wouldn't even know that it went in, other than the monument sign out front. So don't let that deter you. But uh, Thank you. No, you, you mentioned that originally when we first met, and you know normally we'd come with a landscape plan, we'd show you the type of species, but in this case, you know, to go through all that time and your time and, and find out that, now we don't even like you guys. You know, it just doesn't make much sense. And, and if I could piggyback on the retail, uh, I think, I believe you mentioned why not, why not retail. With a right in, right out, let's, let's say, for example, I'll just pick up, pick a retailer out. Now, for some reason, I'm thinking of hamburgers, Culver's. So Culver's would have a real challenging time being on this site. Great use, great for the community. And actually, they looked at one of our sites a, year, a number of years ago, but they need to have two access points. We can only get one here. We wouldn't be able to get it approved through KDOT. It would be a traffic mess. We wouldn't be able, we'd be able to get the circulation through the lot because it's deep, but it, it, it would not function well and it would be, be a challenge. I think it'd be a, from a fire and safety point, it would be a problem. I don't think I'm worried about uh, I think the one on bypass is full and has been full on the, the bypass. I think he's, you know, he's close to being full. So I think there is a need for this. But back in 201, 203, uh, we talked about this. They were going to come in right underneath the ComEd poles to the right there. Jeff Woodard, I think, had the project there. And it was a cost factor, and, they, they, and the economy was changing, and they, they kind of dropped the idea. But we thought at that time that was a good place for it because who, like you say, wants to have a retail with wires right above you? It just doesn't, doesn't work. Um, the stop light that goes by Superior. Rochester? Yeah, Rochester. Mm -hmm. There's no, in the beginning, maybe this would stop them from doing it. The back road was going to go behind all those and connect the one at the end, the north end. And that was going to be it also. And they're all going to come out to the stop light, including the, the animal. Which, which they wanted because it is tough to get in and out with from the for them so but nobody you say M, mb bank owns that property nobody wants to put nobody MB wants bank to put owns the property that I'm, I'm i'm in the process of acquiring okay that's but, the only property they own and they own the jewel house go down the street but nobody wants to put that road through so everybody's well, easier rich can address that i don't know about putting a spot, a spot rich but well, the, the plan still is to have that road that would parallel Orchard at the back end of all these properties. It could dead end into this property, and if you can see on right. the site plan or in your packet, you, you could have that road, that access drive, dead end into the northern side, the northern corner of this property itself. 
the animal hospital could have access, and if the 18 acres ever does develop, that's the intent, is that the road would go all the way up to Jericho and down to, and terminate at this location. So that would complete, but somebody's gotta come in first. With that 18 acres too, I, I, that, that was the plan in, in 2001, was that was gonna de dead end at that property. It was gonna dead end because KDOT didn't want to let those guys uh, on the either Jericho or, or whatever. One, they wouldn't, they wanted to, but the second one, they wouldn't. And I think they probably still keep that idea, but it's the 18 it's, acres, it's I guess. It's still the between. intent to have the 18 acres have okay. the first section of this access drive that we're talking about would have access also to an extension of Rochester, which is the four-way traffic signal. And then it could continue down at the back end of the animal hospital to, to this property. All right. If that occurs, at that point, you lose your temporary, right? Because it's just temporary right in, right out? That's correct. You would m move your gating and key carding system to that? That's how the plan north. was designed. And if you want a more technical, so we could answer those questions, but that's how we have it. We, would, we didn't anticipate that. When we originally spoke with Rich and Jared, we talked about having a snow <laughs> gate for, for you know, temporary use. But depending on the timing of this, I mean, it might, you know, you know, how, you know how, how any DOT moves. Is it going to happen in a year? Is it going to happen in 20 years? But from a developer standpoint, you have to factor that in because let's say we develop this and, you know, and we have a development partner with us. Uh, and so, you know what, this, you can't just all of a sudden build for one and all of a sudden flip and go, oh, here you go. Because it changes, it changes the whole business dynamic of it. So we thought we'd, we'd, we'd try to address. And again, the interior may change. I don't want to you, you, you hoodwink you and say, oh, this is the exact plan. But it's, it's a good conceptual plan. Yeah. And I think it addresses, we put a landscape buffer in here. Again, not species, but you'll see where it's at. We're going to ask for some setback relief on the rear because on the setback on the rear, there really isn't anything. You're, you're facing the forest preserve. There's no one's ever going to look at it. Mm -hmm. And on the ComEd plant, uh, the ComEd plant, it's not like you're, you have a, an attractive neighbor next door. So you do the best you can. But the animal hospital, you know, you'd be friendly with and make it nice for them. And they have nothing there now. But so whatever we have, I think it'd be nice. And then uh, we just recently helped them with, um, they had, uh, they did some parking lot improvements. They asked if we could help them by letting them parking on our, on our lot. And even though they don't own it, we called them and said, sure, we'll see what we can do for you. We called the banks. We're trying to be good neighbors and, you know, make it work for everybody. Yeah. So I think the, the main question this evening is, you know, conceptually speaking, uh, how does the board feel about this type of use here? I mean, it's, it's an allowed use in the M M1, I would assume, right? Does it require special use probably? It special use. So, you know, What's the temperature in the room? Obviously, we're not voting. I don't. Th I don't think up, you have down. a a problem with like he said the the doctor because she was willing to put money in that back road even to make it nicer so she could get out. Uh, conceptually, though, it comes back to yeah, we may not like it, but if King County comes in with different rules with the road in and out and all this, then uh, and I think that's what happened last time. It, it just didn't work right, and, <coughs> and in the end, King County kind of shot it down more than we did. You know what, Tim, would you feel comfortable answering me these questions? Yeah, any, any access to be, given, to be given in the rear of the properties would alleviate uh, some, ma some major traffic concerns for KDOT. Um, as far as use, I'm not sure that they would have any issue with use just be more the connectivity and the access that'd be given throughout mm -hmm. and it, and self storage is a very low traveled use I mean you don't get a lot of traffic here at all you know one or two cars a day maybe and then a couple more on the weekends in light of this evening's fine weather event I'm noticing the fortress construction it's walled on all four sides I'm assuming that there's some contingency about where you would be placing snow when you need to Plow. Yeah, the snow would be hauled out. You wouldn't be able to store on site. Okay. Thank you, 201. Ken, the county didn't have a lot of problems with the in and out, but it was two lanes in. And people didn't drive as fast. And now you got four lanes, and these guys just fly on that. And uh, that's your in and out, I think. You got to have a pretty long long in and out so somebody don't go in and somebody's in front of him and he's sticking out uh, in other words yeah, we'd, we'd make sure there was traffic calming and proper signage to make sure 
everybody is safe. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions, thoughts? Well, based you need on what um, Mr. Thompson has said and uh, conversations I've had with Director Young, it, I'm getting the impression that this is a little bit of a tough, um, a tough lot to find something to find a use for. Um, so I, I appreciate that you're coming to us and offering something that could work because I'm, you know, it's in between those two uses where, like you're saying, I mean, it makes sense to me. I don't know of a lot of type of businesses that would want to go in between the animal hospital and the comment plant. So um, I'm, I'm good with this. I, okay. I appreciate that you're bringing us a use for this. Thank you. And, and, and regardless if, you know, you like me, you don't like me, it, it goes away. This site's in vacant. It's never been developed. Right. And the bank's still sitting on the property. Mm -hmm. And I told the bank, I said, you know, we thought we'd have something moving by now. And now with KDOT, it's going to take us a little more time. I'll be, I'm a very transparent person. I went to the bank and said, we need more time. Because I, I don't know what KDOT's going to do. You know, you say one month, two months, but two months is four months. And you know, we make sure before we go through that time, and it isn't expensive to bring any development forward, is that I, we have you know 100% commitment from this board that we know that you guys like it. And if you don't like it, that's okay, tell me. But you know, then the bank's gonna go back to us and say, okay, Mr. Broker, find me somebody else. And who the buddy, somebody else is, and as I mentioned, it's not gonna be the other, the other categories I mentioned because it just doesn't make sense. So I hope, I hope you find it uh, worthy of a development. Do you have, in your conversations with KDOT, do you think having our support is going to influence anything with them? Because it sounds like this, back however many years ago, that really didn't matter to them. So I'm just wondering if, if you have an opinion that that's going to influence them to move forward. It, it would absolutely help. Um, it's always good to have the uh, support of the city. Uh, it'll absolutely help us move forward with k -Dot. Okay, thank you. Awesome, Denny, what do you think? I think we went farther in 201, Pete. Uh, we even had the special use done. I mean, we we the change hasn't hasn't changed since 201. We we thought at that time it was a perfect place and the <coughs> only thing that would go there, and I think that's the same thing again. Probably some I thinking, but how far along did Kaufman go on his? I don't remember. I thought he I thought he went through the special use and all that. No, I think he developed a preliminary. Plan. You know, the difference back then is that the property to the south was undeveloped. Right now it's a detention area for the highway, so the intent was that the road was going to be extended further south, but obviously it, it'll terminate now at the, um, at the storage facility. Um, there is agreements in place for construction of the, the um, frontage road through the animal hospital and that was contemplated when that property developed. And as Rich and others have said, when Rochester extends west and that um, road can be extended, then that's what would trigger it. So I would think that that would be part of the Bluestone or whoever is the <coughs> developer of that uh, corner at Orchard and Jericho. All right. I'm Pete, fine. Do you have any thoughts? All right. I'm fine with that. Doug? Agreeable. Mr. Bond? Yeah. All right. Is that a good temperature in the room? I'm looking at everyone's eyes, so I, this is a big one for us because we're pulling out time and checkbooks. So are you saying yes? I get not voting, but I'm just kind of getting a feel for you. Mm -hmm. Sir? Sir. Sir? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yep. Down the board, everybody? I'm saying yes, and I'm also interested in you bringing us future development deals with your other lots in the village. I think we got a few things up our sleeves. Good. Awesome. I think we're making you happy. I don't know. We hope so. Everybody else? Thank you very much yeah, for your time and consideration. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. And by the way, if I could just add, I work in a lot of different communities, a lot of different boards, and Montgomery has always been a favorable and fair board to work with, uh, and especially in, today, in today's trying times with any kind of development. So thank you for being open-minded. But you've already said that this is your favorite board, right? <laughs> this, this one, as it board. sits? Okay. This is my favorite. Everybody here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Good to see you.
All right, so we'll move on to the uh, consent. I'll read the items, entertain a motion for approval. Uh, minutes of the Village Board meeting of November 27th. Uh, executive session minutes of the 27th. Building report for November. Counts receivable, counts receivable report for November. Counts payable through December 7th. Cancellation of December 19th, Committee of the Whole. Cancellation of the uh, December 27th board meeting. Uh, Ordinance 1786, which is uh, providing for the abatement of 2017 tax levy on uh, two, 2007 bonds. That's waiver first, passage on the second. And we're abating this because we have other revenues to pay for that. So it's something we do every year. Uh, and then we have uh, I is Ordinance 1787, uh, <coughs> same thing, abating uh, 2008A. Ordinance 1788, which is abating our series 2011. Ordinance 1789, abating our uh, series 2013. Those are all waiver, waiver of first, passage on the second. And we have Ordinance 1790, which is abating the series 2014. And Ordinance 1791, abating the 2017 series. So moved. Second. Trustee Youngerman. Yay. Trustee Marisek? Yes. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yep. And Trustee Heinz? Yay. And that carries 6 0. Thank you. Uh, items for separate action this evening. We have Ordinance 1785 adopting the tax levy. This is our second reading, so we will um, take a vote on this this evening. Director Van Voren, do you have anything? There are no changes from last, uh, last time the board saw it with the first reading, so if there's any questions, I can answer those. Thank you. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. second. Call the roll. That was Trustee Sperling second. Okay. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Heinz? Yay. Trustee Youngerman? Yay. And Trustee Marisek? Yes. And that carries 6 0. Thank you all. Item B, uh, Resolution 2017-014, authorizing an agreement between the Village of Montgomery and ID Solutions. This is for the Audiovisual Systems Upgrade Project. Director Van Voren. Thank you, President Brawley. Uh, at the last November meeting, uh, the, there were uh, two individuals from ID Solutions that uh, did a presentation. Um, the amounts have not changed. Uh, it's just formalized in a... Uh, proposed document um, as Exhibit A, and then um, I did ask about a schedule. Um, they're looking at uh, <coughs> getting out here in February, um, and they would do it after a board meeting, do all the changes in approximately a week. They'd test it in the second week, and then have the, the next board meeting. So we wouldn't miss a meeting uh, in this room. If there's any other questions, I can answer those. Awesome. Then. Any questions? We may have covered this. The, the equipment that we have, does it have any re residual value? Not really. It's more than 10 years old, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. They don't do locks the doors, do they? <laughs> no. Okay. I had to ask. That's a good question. All right. Any other questions for staff? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Marisek? Yes. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Hines? Yay. And Trustee Youngerman? Yay. That carries 6 0. Thank you. Uh, item C is Ordinance 1792, amending the Village Code Section 3-23A regarding alcoholic beverages, uh, closing hours. This is a waiver of first, passage on the second reading. I can discuss it. All right. Uh, we were contacted by Benny's Beverage Depot. Uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are uh, big days for them, and where normally they would be able to start selling at 9 a.m., they cannot because of being on a Sunday. Um, and so they want to see if there's anything we'd do. Um, so we brought you something to consider. Basically, it says if a holiday falls on a Sunday, that the business could begin selling at 9 a.m. instead of 10. So this is only applicable to a holiday? Correct. And the agenda, just for the record, says that this is alcohol beverage closing hours, and we're talking about opening hours. That's what the section of the code is entitled, that it's okay. being amended. So okay. even though it addresses all hours in the actual provision of the code. Okay. I, just, I was 
reading it, and I'm thinking, I don't yeah, see no, anything about closing. That's just what closing. section 3-23 says. And Thank is you. This, this would only be for this type of liquor license, or is this all? No. It's class A, B, and C, which is the one that affects the knees. Is, yeah. is that strictly packaged? Correct. Okay. They didn't say anything about Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day. No, these are the two they were concerned about, um, okay. but we just said if a holiday falls on a Sunday to try and cover our bases. How many businesses does it affect? All the A, B, and C. Well, it yeah. kind of would be good to know that. I don't that. know. I don't know, yeah, I don't know the actual many. number. Would have been good to know that. Around that 10 is. or so, I think. Probably somewhere in there. I don't know if you yeah, you would, um, Walgreens could sell at 10 then? Walmart 10? Nine. nine. Or I'm sorry, uh, nine? Mm-hmm. Okay. So like Stan said, approximately 10. I think the more of the policy question is on a sun on a Sunday that's a holiday is ten o'clock, you know, are we willing to go to nine o'clock because of, because it's a holiday, people are traveling. I mean it really begs the bigger question of, you know, what is the ten o'clock on all Sundays? What's you know, how do we feel about that as a general rule anyway, as opposed to the normal nine? Uh, but we're not bringing that forward today. But I'm just thinking if you're traveling and you're gonna stop somewhere to pick something up. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Seems like a low impact move. Yeah. And we cannot do this just for Binnies. So that's why we're revising the ordinance for everybody. So I think it's potentially confusing to have it change just on certain days. So I, I would, enter, if we're going to change it, I'd entertain a global change. To nine on every Sunday? We just recently went to 10 on every Sunday, didn't we? Um, I think it was noon. Yeah, right, it, was. it wasn't. It was long. noon up until yeah. two yeah. years ago. Yeah. So yeah. it would be up to the businesses to then say, "Hey, we're open at nine o'clock." Yeah. And this isn't whatever. for consumption. This is for packaged. Right. Are you with? Perfect. Yeah. If you want to come up, that's perfect. I would be willing to approve this to help with the the short term, getting us through the holidays yeah. and bringing that nine a.m. back. Um, my name is Rick Parenti. I'm the operations director for Binney's Beverage Depot. Uh, thank you very much for considering this. 90% um, of the time, or unless it's on a holiday, we all of our stores pretty much open except for one on Sundays at 9 a.m. And the only one that does do that is Evergreen Park because of competition factors. We really don't have a desire at this point to open up our stores before 10 a.m. on Sundays. Um, it's one day of the week we have shortened hours where we're only 10 to 6. Uh, we're just looking for this expansion mainly for uh, something like Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve because these are our two top days of the year. Mm -hmm. our, we will have lines of customers outside the doors when we open up. So if we're not open, that just means the customers are going to go to Plainfield or go to Naperville, which I don't think anybody in Mon Montgomery wants. Uh, since we've opened in the last year, we've seen uh, a lot of Montgomery residents also uh, come shop here which has affected our Plainfield and Naperville stores a little bit, but we've also brought in Oswego, Aurora, so you're bringing other residents from other communities in here. Uh, with regards to um, your point about doing Universal, um, we wouldn't mind that only on the basis because next year, December 23rd, falls on uh, Sunday, so we would try to do, would probably be requesting a similar thing next year only on that basis. The whole scope of what we're looking for, it's really just two days. Um, Fourth of July falls on a Sunday, we'll still operate on normal hours because we just know from experience that expanding the hours on those days on a long <coughs> weekend where the parties pretty much start on Friday and last through Tuesday, uh, Sunday is pretty much just a normal day kind of thing for us. So we're not looking for massive expansions, just these two main days. But unless you want to see me again here next year, <laughs> uh, you know, a nine o'clock would be fine with us. Uh, hope, okay. Hopefully we could get something like that. So awesome. So can we, we modify it to be include, because I don't know if Christmas Eve is considered a holiday? Well, 23rd is yes. not considered a holiday. Because he's saying the 23rd next year, Christmas Eve would be considered. So, uh, so that's, that's what it is this year, it's what Christmas Eve. I'd like to see us do is, move, you know, if the board's comfortable, let's move forward with this change now. Um, like to see, you know, any sort of data or reports from the PD on any issues we might have had since we've bumped the Sundays generally down from, from noon to 10. 
and we can revisit that in Jan January, February, see if we want to make it permanent. And I previously had discussed and asked about moving our closing time forward a little bit. Yeah, some as well. So yeah. if we can revisit we that. We can bring back a discussion time. after the holidays then. Yeah, let's do that. <coughs> so are there any other comments uh, for Binnie's or just in general on this policy? Is there Motion to one? approve. Second. Oh, go ahead. I was Busty Mayor Sack. Before, oh. um, no, go ahead. Sorry. Before he stepped away, I just wanted to thank you and your store for being in Montgomery. It's a very clean store. The personnel are friendly. It's a great addition to the community. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a lot of fun since we've opened up a little over a year ago, and the business keeps tricking up, which is always a great sign. So uh, the community's been, uh, it's been an incredible response from the community, and we look forward to seeing the business grow with you guys. Thank you. So thank you. Great humidor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Trustee Marasek? Yes. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Heinz? Yay. And Trustee Youngerman? Yes. And that carries 6 0. Thank you. All right, moving on to item D, we have Ordinance 1793 authorizing the execution of an amendment to the annexation agreement of LaSalle Bank National Association <laughs> successor trustee to American National Bank and Trust, Company of Chicago. Uh, this is for Montgomery Place Apartments. This is first reading, so we won't be taking action this evening. Uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so tonight we are here to discuss two separate annexation agreement amendments, um, the first of which is the one for the Montgomery Place Apartments. And by way of background, I just wanted to explain to the board that this is the sixth amendment to this annexation agreement. There's a long history on it. It gets very complicated because certain annexation agreements amend certain parcels and certain ones amend other parcels. And you know, just going through has kind of been a beast. So this one particularly, what it will do is it'll pull out the property in which the apartments are going to be on. And this then will be the only annexation amendment that governs that property. So the remaining portions, the remaining five agreements will remain in effect as to the other properties, but when we're actually looking at the apartments, we won't have to go back to all six any longer. It'll just be this one agreement. Um, this is still a working draft because we're trying to hammer out some final details with regard to um, the land cash fees with certain entities, but in theory, um, you know, we kind of have everything outlined the way that it's going to look, and then we'll plug in the numbers and update the board as soon as we have um, what we believe will be agreeable and in the best interests of all parties involved. Um, so tonight I would just entertain any questions that you may have, but I really just wanted to outline the procedure that this one will be replacing the other ones just as to those properties, um, or as to this particular property. And the public hearing is continued because it is a working draft. So next, um, next meeting, if any members of the public have concerns, they'll have that opportunity as well. But that's not the only change in this, is it? I'm sorry, what do you mean? So to combine these all essentially into I mean, no, no, actual no. changes taking place. Correct? No, the actual change that's taking place is setting forth the development requirements for this particular okay. property. So all the subheadings in here, um, you know, mm -hmm. goes through which village codes apply, um, you know, the typical what the development fees are going to be, what the impact fees are going to be. So there is a lot of substance here, but the um, opportunity we have here is to kind of replace all those other agreements, which is different than the next one. The Huntington Chase one is just, um, and it, it, the other ones will still remain in effect, the other two versions you. of the agreement. This one is just, we only have to look at this agreement as far as the apartment property is concerned. I have a question. Does the school donation portion of this, is this in line with what we see this yes this matches up with the um, ordinance we have for the school district okay cool. is it possible to get and just a, a bullet point of what we're changing before we approve this just like what did it used to be and what is it now just so we we, we can work of this, together we can work something up yeah on that. of the substantial changes because it doesn't you know if it's wording or trying to clarify this project for versus another one it's hard for us to um, understand that reading through the legalese. Yeah, as Laura explained, it it's very complicated because this is technically the sixth mm -hmm. amendment to an annexation agreement from, I don't know how many years ago, 16 years ago. So, and there's been subsequent amendments. What we're doing is pulling it out, as she mentioned, and restating just the annexation agreement for this apartment complex property. Mm -hmm. So it makes it much cleaner. Um, we can 
do the best we can to give a chronology of the changes to the, the different six that have gone, or the five that have gone into this point. Yeah, or more so just, I guess, currently in effect is, is the Fifth Amendment, right? To well, the annexation, or the sixth? No, there's a couple in effect, because the Fifth Amendment just was the modification to allow the Binney sign. Um, mm -hmm. So some of them just amend very specific things to very specific properties. Gotcha. So I think it's actually the Second Amendment that is the most global that's still in effect, okay. and then like the Third, Fourth, and Fifth amended smaller things, but they didn't restate um, in whole, so you still have to reference mm -hmm. back to all the other ones to determine whose obligations are which and which obligations have been fulfilled. So because this project is unique in the scope that there's a whole development going in, um, you know, we were able to pull this parcel out to try to clarify um, the obligations, and because there will be, you know, school mm -hmm. donations and park donations, mm -hmm. um, you know, it really lends itself to being able to do that as a part, you know, from the Vinny sign where you can't really, or you don't really want to go through the process of making an entire new agreement yeah. to take all the things for that Vinny's property when it really doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to do so. So, okay, it makes sense. Uh, but if there's anything substantial that we're modifying that I guess currently is in place for this parcel, that's all I'm, I'd like to see is just that side by side, not any of the other <laughs> stuff. So. As I'm trying to simplify it, I just get further and further into the weeds. Uh, so, awesome. Any other questions for staff on this? We will review this at a future meeting. Uh, very likely. Hopefully January. January, January 8th. Well, we'll have the... A comprehensive, okay. almost completed, or a completed draft up subject to the board's feedback and questions at that point. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Let's move right along to uh, Ordinance 1794, uh, authorizing the exec execution of the second amendment to the annexation agreement for Huntington Chase. Go okay, ahead. so this is the second annexation agreement amendment of the evening, um, and this one is different in that this is just a supplement to the annexation agreement that's currently in effect, and what this does is it only applies to the undeveloped lots in the Huntington Chase subdivision. Um, we didn't want to go ahead and amend everything since there's already current homes there. So this pulls out the undeveloped lots and just um, establishes uh, for example, you know, there was some architectural standards in the original, you know, so this just says that the architectural standards are going to be subject, you know, to the approval by community development, but they're not necessarily tied to exactly what was in that original agreement. Um, because most of the public improvements had been completed, and then, as everyone knows, with the bond um, money, you know, that was all hashed out, so this kind of just removes those obligations and clarifies for the people coming in to develop the few remaining lots in the subdivision um, what they will be required to do. Um, this agreement is substantially complete, which is why the public hearing was able to be closed. Um, however, any questions that the board has or feedback, we can certainly incorporate. Um, it's not up for action tonight, mm -hmm. but there is a more complete draft for review. I have a question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Does this um, agreement make the existing vacant lots more uh, readily available for sale? or it, If someone's interested, it, it helps the process helps complete that development? Yes. Okay. We, we know that the property owner um, has been entertaining mm -hmm. offers for the property, and one of the goals that they had was accomplishing this annexation agreement amendment so that it would be more marketable to home builders looking at these 47 lots that are available. Thank you. Awesome. If you could do the same thing. With this one, just any bullet points of changes that we're updating, just be good to see that. But I think it's nice to clean stuff up so that he can sell those. It's nice to see them ready to kind of move forward with it now. I think the homeowners out there will be very excited um, until the you know construction traffic starts. But I think that's the beginning of the end uh, to the process for them. Mm -hmm. And they lose the empty lot next door. Right, yeah, they <laughs> the lose their... playing soccer. <laughs> Another thing, um, I'd, I'd like to thank staff. I know that uh, some of the homeowners out there had some concerns, and you guys seem to address all of their concerns, and I, I believe that they, they're very satisfied in the answers and uh, also agree with the amendment, so thank you. Let the record reflect satisfied customers <laughs> and a board member, which is good. Hashtag satisfied customers. <laughs> all right, with that, we'll move on to um, item F, which is intergovernmental agreement for uh, the sharing of services, staff, and equipment. I can handle that. All righty. As you know, we've been working with Oswego and Yorkville and now also Sugar Grove on uh, some joint purchasing, joint training, sharing equipment, sharing personnel. Uh, what this does is just uh, provide some structure to the sharing, especially of personnel, also some of sharing equipment. 
uh, just lays out reimbursement uh, if we would you know, need a building inspector for a period of time or if we want to share equipment that there'd be discussion of the duration and use, that kind of thing. So it's really just helping formalize uh, what we've been doing. So and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'll just jump in and say that it's nice to see the IPWA man acronym in here, which is nice. I don't know, I forget what it stands for, but. See, there you go. I like it. Any questions or comments? You know, we don't think about this very much uh, in this room, the fact that we're working with other municipalities on, on a variety of different things at this point, but outside of this room and a few, you know, these towns, it's not extremely common for municipalities to be so open to sharing services, having our trucks drive over to that town to fill up with the, you know, liquid that we're spraying on the streets. And so um, a few weeks ago, or maybe last month, if you recall, the uh, Trans, what was it, Transform Illinois, Illinois um, awarded Oswego, Yorkville, and Montgomery an award for working together, which is it's the most simple way that I can put that, um, which we don't think of as being like that outside the box, but it really is. And I think a credit goes to staff because very often you can see municipalities where maybe they're not so willing to share um, a public works vehicle or um, do joint training with the police department. So I uh, just want to thank staff for being open to that. It all comes down to uh, better service at a reduced price for all communities. And so the best thing we can do is not live in our silos, and we're doing a good job of that. So thank you. And that's my speech. All right, we are uh, approving this tonight. Any other questions, comments for staff? All right. Move to approve. There's a motion. Is there a second? So moved. It is on for motion? Yes. Okay. I didn't think it was. I didn't either, but that's okay. Any other? Uh, no. All right, call the roll. Trustee Sperling? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Heinz? Yay. Trustee Youngerman? Yay. Trustee Marisak? Yes. And Trustee Bond? Yes. <coughs> All right, we don't have anything. Thank you, that carries, by the way. Um, we don't have any items for discussion, but I'm certain that we have new or unfinished business. I have two items, if I may. Go ahead. Um, first, uh, just checking in, check with Jeff earlier this week anything on the route 30 drainage i don't have a report back from them yet i have uh called and the consultant asked what the status of the review is okay thank you and second um there was a uh a hit and run accident um where multiple agencies responded the police departments um including, I believe, Montgomery, Oswego, uh, maybe a, a couple other agencies, and they pulled the guy out of the burning vehicle and pretty much saved his life. Uh, as I understand, a couple of the Oswego officers uh, either received second, I think they were second degree burns. Correct. Um, I would like to recognize those officers at some point because I believe, as I understand, the driver of the hit and run vehicle wasn't, he wasn't going to get out of the vehicle. They had to forcibly remove him from the vehicle and then it was burning and they managed to save his life. So I'd like to, to reach out to those officers and thank them. And it just kind of reinforces that as we need police officers, it doesn't matter which community that they're in, they all come running and they all come to help. So I'd like to say thank you to those officers. Perfect. All right. Any other sports stories or anything like that? Nothing? Sports stories? I, I paid Mr. Youngerman's $10 that I lost with great Wisconsin choked. But uh, Mr. Rogers will probably come back next game or so, so. You almost lost to Cleveland in overtime. Okay, I know that. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I, that I was gonna mention uh, was earlier this week, I actually got invited uh, to the Chicago Climate Charter, um, which I uh, didn't know tons about beforehand, uh, but attended the event and signed on as a, um, signed this charter, which is 51 cities from around the country, actually around the world, 
uh, the mayors from Mexico City, Paris, France, and um, you know there were several local communities, uh, but was kind of a last minute thing. Uh, was able to go there and you know support uh, green infrastructure, climate uh, sensitive things, things that literally when because I stayed for the rest of the conference, stuff that we have done in Montgomery for a decade. Uh, whether it's you know changing out our street lights for LED lights, naturalizing our basins, I and mean, there's stuff that we've been doing here for decades, and this just kind of highlights that and reinforces that it's for a multitude of purposes, whether it's cost-saving measures or also saving the planet. Um, so I just wanted to update you on that. I, I did invite a representative from the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus uh, to come to one of our future meetings because they do have a green green communities compact, and they're rolling out a second one too. Uh, essentially doing what we can uh, to help the environment on a local scale. So uh, attended that this week, and um, we will be t talking about that hopefully in the future. So anything else? All right, future meetings have uh, all been canceled, and uh, except for the beautification committee meeting, uh, which is the holiday decorations judging. So with that, this is our last meeting of the year. One, one last thing. Are we going to do that thing again where we uh, tell oh, Just Youngerman that we have a meeting and nobody else shows up? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, go ahead. In reference to the beautification meeting on December 20th, if anyone is interested, um, please come out and help judge lights. From what Director Hoppenstead said, uh, we have a hundred and... I think as of this morning, we had 131 nominations for over 80 addresses. Historically, we've seen about 40 addresses throughout the course of the night, and it takes each team two, sometimes more, hours uh, to survey those. So we're expecting quite a Wednesday, quite and an event next Wednesday, and there's still a week to go. So. And when Director Robinson said, said Stan and his wife will be driving in separate cars, and he told my daughter to bring her bike. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we may have to be thinning the, the judging pool a little bit. So, um, so if anybody is available and interested, it is an absolute fabulous time to go drive around. And if you knock on the door and hand them the letter from the mayor and the beautification committee, if you could hear these kids in the background yelling, we won, we won, and cheering and how happy it makes people, it is really a great way to participate and give back. It really is a great thing. I commend Stan and the beautification for coming up with that program. I just recently met, actually it's one of my kids' teachers, moved, just moved out of Montgomery, but every year, a few years, her husband won that award, and he, carried, he actually moved out of the town, um, but he has the signs and he displays them in his garage, so okay. it's, it's pretty cool. I was informed that uh, WGN-TV and WLS-TV are both sending mobile vans to do a story on our holiday lighting, so wow. it's good for the community. Just make sure nobody nominated my house again, seriously, because my neighbor did it as a joke last year, and I ended up with a sign. And I don't decorate that much, so just make sure my house isn't included. Last thing, Matt, uh, I want to remind everybody about the MEDC Thursday, this Thursday, at Poor Boys uh, from 4 to 7. And uh, we have always have good food, and there's a lot of people that come, a lot of the businesses. I invite everybody to just talk to people. I guess that's the main thing. Perfect. All right. With that, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All the roll. Trustee Heinz. Yay. Trustee Youngerman. Yay. Trustee Marisek. Yes. Trustee Bond. Yes. Trustee Sperling. Yes. And Trustee Lee. Yes. And we're adjourned. Have a good holiday and a good new year.